but yeah what's this the the children's tv show uh the children's tv show with a dark secret okay let's check this out joy junction what the fuck is this okay guys so this is the children's tv show with a dark secret by nick crowley let's watch it and it'll be worth 20 points Flash warning. No doubt I'm having a, a picture on the front page of every newspaper in the country, right, Ron? It's 8 a.m. sharp on a Saturday morning in 1979. Families in the Tampa Bay area turn on their television sets as thousands of sleepy children awake on their day off from school. 1979? Some flip to Nickelodeon, where a rerun of Pinwheel is playing. This is way Some before my to time. See where they would catch the final episode of a short-lived TV series called Fang Face. However, that morning, others would opt for a more virtuous wake-up call, flipping the station instead to Channel 22, or the Christian Television Network, where a new show was opening the day slate. A show called... Joy Junction! The that is so Junction 70s. quickly found its place in the hearts of viewers, with kids immediately connecting with the quirky characters and silly games. Their Christian parents, too, found solace in the show's themes and non-offensive stories, creating a program that could be experienced together as a whole family. From that day on, families all across Florida and eventually across the entire United States came to enjoy the program, which continued on for a run of over 20 long years. Whoa! Until one Saturday morning, 20 years sharp, when, without explanation, the show came to an unceremonious end and was never broadcast again. That's very weird. Today, the show and all official records of it have been scrubbed from the internet. Whoa. But the companies behind its creation and the networks that aired it acting as if it never even existed. Some allegedly going as far as to destroy any remaining copies, thanks solely to the heinous events that transpired during and after its television run. I hey, thank you for the follow, man. This is the man. story of Joy Junction, the children's TV show with an unimaginably dark secret. Dude, I love Nick Crowley's videos. You have to check them out. Dude, I like how he does, I, he does so much research and it's amazing. And this is the, the way he edits it and the effects he puts on it just makes it, and the music just makes it really creepy and awesome. And thank you so much for the generous, for the follow on Twitch, I appreciate it. We'll return after these messages. How does Nick when find this stuff? It was scrubbed from the internet. Is spam phone calls and spam oh, we got a sponsor, text. baby. There was a point in my life where I swear every single day I was getting these texts from random numbers that were all trying to get me to click on sketchy links that if I clicked on them likely would have hacked my entire existence. And I know the main reason why I used to get so many texts like this was because these huge companies can't keep our data safe. Recently, yeah, I'm sorry about that comment. I was referring to actual time. Yeah, no worries. 60 million users was stolen. No, I didn't see. I didn't feel code. that way at all. That data You're good. includes full names, addresses, email addresses, phone numbers, and credit card data. At absolute best, this is going to lead to so much more spam, and at worst, it could lead to fraud. So what is Ticketmaster doing about this? Ticketmaster? No, nothing. They said they didn't think the hack would have a material impact on their overall business. I swear, so I'll be back in five. Okay, I'll see you in five. We'll take our data, but then do absolutely nothing to protect it. The video is exactly like 20, 20 something minutes long, so you'll be back. Video. But you'll be back in or time for more stuff. My data has been part of a data breach, or if it's been leaked onto the dark web. It also gives me fast fraud alerts if anyone tries to use that data to hack into my credit or bank accounts, and it removes my information from data broker websites, so I get less spam. I also get things like transaction monitoring, a VPN, antivirus, a password manager. This is pretty. Cool. Cool. controls and identity theft insurance and best of all i get it in one convenient app at one affordable price so if my info had been compromised in that Ticketmaster league i wouldn't have much to worry about because aura is always on and always working hard to keep me safe i'm not leaving myself and my family vulnerable to data breaches and if you don't want all to right nick go on over to aura thanks for the sponsor nick crowley where you can try your first two weeks absolutely free just by following that link down below bro where's my sponsor Stick your laptop in EVO chair, please sponsor me. Come and join us for a half hour of fun and games at Joy Junction. Now here's Sheriff Don. Thank you and welcome to this fun little town of Joy. I'm going to take a guess that this guy is a pedophile or something. Or a predator. And that's why they canceled it. Junction. 
Joy Junction was both the name of the show and the name of the fictional town in which it was focused. Oh, you have to go. Town Thanks for joining. Characters Appreciate it, man. Stories, As always. Play games and answer questions. All of which have a good night. To Christianity. Thank Each you. episode followed the same basic structure. They were 30 minutes long and would tackle one general lesson taught in the Bible and tell it through an acted out story. This was then interspersed with various games and audience participation as the show heavily leaned on including its young fan base and immersing them in the world of Joy Junction. They even had a live studio audience for every episode. Yeah, see you, man. Thank you for staying longer. I appreciate it. With the participants and crowd genuinely seeming excited to be there, which was largely due to its lovable cast of characters. The most prevalent of these was Sheriff Don, who was Sheriff actually Don. played by the creator of the show itself, Don McAllister. And the whole gang is here, so we're going to have us a good time today. Glad you The Light of Jesus. 30 minutes. He guided the show from segment to segment and often focused on the Bible while driving home the episode's central theme, while also being the one who most often interacted with the children who participated in the show. Then there was Forrest Padley, a soft-spoken professor who, ironically, hmm. often had lessons taught to him. We're getting the lore. His obvious clueless nature. Your bubble, he'll even help when you did wrong. Uh, I'm not a pope, but how about how about he'll even help when you're in trouble? Hey, Sheriff Don, you're a poet too. <laughs> and of course, the fan favorite, Whitler Dan. Whitler Dan, a of a southern farmer known as the. Reminds me of that uh, SpongeBob episode. I'm Dirty Dan, and Pinhead Larry. No, I'm Dirty Dan. <laughs> what was his name? Whitler Dan. You know, this seems like a very harmless TV show. I, I don't see what the problem is so far. Goofy storyteller of the group. Good, yeah. Oh, hi. I'm just sitting here reading some of the mail from Joy Junction and uh, some of the jokes in here. Would you like me to read some more? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you want me to read it? Yeah. But of all the characters to come from Joy Junction, there was one or two who were by far the most popular yet polarizing. But of all the characters to come from Joy Junction, there was one or two who were by far the most popular yet polarizing. Ron and Marty. Ron and Marty. Played by professional ventriloquist Ronald Williams. Okay. No. No, 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 no. You are not doing that to I do not like puppets. I don't like ventriloquism. I think it's creepy as hell. Look at that face. That is creepy, dude. No thanks. Ron and Marty were far and away the most memorable characters for those who watched the show, and for obvious reasons too. Many children watching at home found the duo and Marty specifically to be off-putting, even horrifying. With some yeah, he is horrifying. Them nightmares and was just too creepy to look. It at, is creepy, causing dude. Many to stop watching the show altogether. But despite this, others found the duo to be hilarious and entertaining, tuning in week after week just to see them perform. For the viewers, it was a love or hate relationship. Whatever floats your boat, I guess. But even so, it was impossible to dismiss their impact on the show. They appear in every single episode that we have available today, and they were often tasked with teaching the children some of the series' most important lessons. Lessons like not to cuss. Things like on here and a lot of swear words. All the kids are using swear words these days, and I'm afraid one of them's gonna slip out of my mouth. First of all, why don't you try immediately pray and asking the Lord to take those bad words? Oh, it's one of the religious of shows. Mind. Say, that's a good idea. Practicing self control. Self control? Oh, well, I don't think my self control works. It must be broken. <laughs> no, well, no, Marty. I don't think anybody can practice self control all by themselves, but if you'll just ask the Lord to help you, He will. Defeating bad thoughts. Hearts will cause good words and thoughts to come out of our mouths. It's almost so, Marty, as if our mouths will overflow with the thoughts and the ideas that are inside of us. Mm. You know, we need to be very careful about what we put in our minds and our hearts, Marty. That's for sure. And most controversially... Ron, they were looking at some dirty pictures uh -oh. and they me to look too. Well, Marty, what did you do? Well, I said, look, guys, I like you a lot and I want to play with you, but I can't look at those pictures. I just can't do it. Whether it was the lessons they taught, or Marty's blatant uncanniness, these two characters were the most vividly remembered part of the show. It seems like it's like not... I mean, that seems like okay lessons to teach kids so far. Right? Am I crazy or what? What happens? <laughs> and this is important as these memories are essentially all we've been left with. 
feet are still covered with that darkness and with that sin. And when we say he'll wash us as white as The disappearance of Joy Junction. That's within us. Joy Junction is classified today mainly as lost media. No official copies of the show have ever been published by its creators or the networks that owned it. It just kind of ended one day and was never talked about again by those involved with the project. And this lack of archiving stretches past just the media itself. If you were to look online for information on the show today, you would find next to nothing. Mm. There's no Wikipedia page, no actors, producers, or directors mentioning it in their work history or on their resumes. Nick, how did you find this then, bro? <laughs> how do you do your research? This is impressive. No official website. There's essentially nothing. Not even so much as an official date in which the show started and ended, despite the fact that the show apparently ran for 20 long years. Damn. We know for sure that the show aired on CTN in the 1980s, specifically in the Tampa Bay area, before it was later syndicated and broadcast across the country on channels such as TBN and Smile of a Child. But today, none of these networks mention the show having ever aired in their lineups, and none of them have ever provided an explanation as to why the show was pulled from the air. The only reason we even know anything about it is thanks to old recordings and VHS tapes captured by those who once enjoyed the show, mm. with a few dozen episodes and some short clips from the series having made their way to you. I see, so basically the way he got his research was he probably talked to these individuals or something or interviewed them and the people that were fans of the show that had VHS tapes of the old uh, reruns or reruns of it. YouTube in recent years, essentially serving as the only surviving relics of- And they put it on YouTube. Because of this, the show is largely a mystery, and information is incredibly scarce and hard to come by. But after doing some digging, I was able to find some mentions of it in old newspapers printed nearly 45 oh, years wow, ago Nick. that did shed a bit of light on the context surrounding its creation. The first mention of Joy Junction came in 1978, within the evening Independent, though at this point it was not even a television show yet. Instead, advertisements were placed in the paper weekly for the Faith Community Church in Largo, Texas, mm -hmm. that mentioned including some sort of in-person act specifically for children, called Joy Junction. It's unclear what this performance actually entailed, but coincidentally, just one year later, the show Joy Junction would begin filming in Largo, Florida, with these original performances likely serving as the inspiration and the basis for the show itself. <laughs> Following this trail of newspapers, I also found that the show was created by a company called WCLF, WCLF. which began broadcasting back in October of 1979, with the founder of the company vaguely mentioning Joy Junction as an upcoming project. And sure enough, one week later, that same paper included a television guide that mentioned Joy Junction showing on TV for the very first time. There it is. Its likely premiere date of November 10th, 1979. Aside from this, I was able to confirm that the show did in fact play all across the United States and wasn't limited to just Florida, which might be why finding an exact date on when the show ended has proven essentially impossible. But the most common belief across the internet is that the show lasted until somewhere around 2004, putting its lifespan at a surprising mm. 25 years. That is really long time. That's a really long time for a show to run and not have anything left a trace of it, like on the internet. Because the internet was around by 2004 and nobody like put the videos online or something usual that there's hardly any mention of it online and that there was seemingly no attempt to ever even archive it it seemed as if the parties involved didn't just drop the show and forget about it they completely washed their hands of it and tried their best to bury it Wow. There are even rumors circulating that CTN themselves had all their remaining copies set on fire and destroyed what? so that the show would forever be forgotten. And that is extreme. What are they trying to hide? Are they trying to hide something really sinister with this children's show? I mean, I guess. A dark secret. I'm so, I'm so invested. Like, what is the dark secret? Please tell me. And when you consider everything that happened, this isn't really all that surprising. But what is surprising is the extent of the unraveling and the way in which it began, as it all started with a simple water bottle. A water bottle? What? It's unknown when exactly the discovery was made. What do you mean? Just that it was a terrible one. Police arrest a man under the suspicion of distributing CP, only to find uh, numerous geez. images depicting it on his hard drive, with the vast majority of the victims involved being impossible to identify. Except for one. Uh -oh. Within the background of one of the images lay a hidden clue. A water bottle displaying the name of a swim and scuba school in Johnson County, Kansas City. Police did a search of the area, asking for help identifying the victim, which led them to a young child who swiftly pointed out their abuser as being a man named Michael Arnett. Michael was- Look at this freak. This guy looks like a fucking pedophile dude. Immediately. 
Look at that face, bro. That guy looks sinister. ...be arrested, after which the true extent of his crime would be uncovered on his home computers. They contained countless photographs and videos depicting the same disturbing material, including a great deal that was produced by Michael himself. How does this have to do with the, the joy of function? The are genuinely some of the most appalling I've ever heard described. Though we'll get more into that later, because there is something more relevant to this video that they found on his device. It was a lengthy online chat history with a man named Ronald Brown. And Ron, you're not one to talk. You're oh my god, it's Ronald Brown. I knew it. This is why I don't trust ventriloquist, dude. Dude, look at that. Ronald Brown, this is why I, dude. Well, he's on the telephone too. Well, I guess you've got a point there, Marty. Ronald's life was centered around three things, ventriloquism, Christianity, and children. His primary job was working as a traveling puppeteer with his show called Puppets Plus, working school events, birthday parties, and at local malls. He also hosted a weekly puppet show for his local congregation that he billed as being specifically for children. And of course, he had his role on Joy Junction. Every aspect of his life brought him in close proximity to children. And this is ridiculous. This is gross, dude. All the signs are there. As it turns out, there were several undisclosed incidents that raised serious red flags about this. The first incident occurred in 1998, at a time when Joy Junction was still believed to be in circulation across TV stations. Brown was driving home late one evening when a police officer pulled him over for speeding. The officer shined his light in the car as Ronald reached for his documents, only for his light to catch something unusual stuck uh -oh. between the seat cushions. It was underwear. Children's underwear. Oh my god, Despite what a fucking creep. Children's underwear in the fucking car, dude. Really? This guy's ridiculous. He I hope he's in jail. With the alarming nature of this, Ronald would end up convincing the officer that nothing strange was going on, claiming that the old pair of briefs merely belonged to his puppet, Marty. What? That That's night, a terrible Ronald excuse. Was allowed to drive away without further questioning. Dude. Though things get stranger from here. Around the time of this encounter, Ronald had been living in a home conveniently located less than a block away from a popular playground. And upon moving into this home, neighbors began to complain of Ronald's relationship with young children in the area. Every Wednesday, kids from around the block would ride their scooters and their bikes over to his house for free pizza. The that is not cool. would eventually from the home, and Ronald would drive them in his van to a nearby church, where he would supposedly perform his ventriloquism. These weekly meetups were strange to say the Wait, so he lives by a playground, gets kids to go over to his house, he drives them into in a van to a church probably secluded and shows them ventriloquism what the actual fuck the least especially because they were allegedly fairly secretive with some children even sneaking off to meet the man without telling their parents there were even other allegations that ronald himself had hid their bikes underneath his home almost as if he was trying to avoid any suspicion and although I couldn't find concrete proof of this, it was rumored that when neighbors checked underneath his home, they reported not only finding these bikes, but used sex toys as well, oh! which were stashed there for unknown reasons. Oh! There were never any sort of allegations made against Ron, legal or otherwise, but the red flags here are glaring. Red flags that seemingly went ignored, as people bought what into the fuck? Ronald's act as a God-fearing, silly ventriloquist. Oh, come on. Get, don't give me that bullshit. Happened, the chats found on the computer of Michael Arnett shattered this perception in the most dramatic way imaginable. All right, what's, Though even so, what's happening? These chats aren't what you would expect. No, somehow they are much, much worse. All right, what's the revelation? This is really, this is really intriguing now. Following is a brief excerpt from Ronald and Michael's chat log. Uh-oh. Due to the graphical nature of these messages, I don't feel comfortable reading them out loud. Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm not gonna read them either. Oh my god!
Within their conversations were numerous What the fuck? What the f actual fuck? Numerous messages between the two men, fantasizing about not only killing children, but eating them as well, with most of the messages being far too vile to discuss or even show in this video. And this wasn't just fascination, it was obsession. Ronald had even found a child at his church that he frequently discussed wanting to eat, mentioning that he would be the perfect feast for Easter describing what it would be like to end his life and to consume his body. And this went Jesus far past Christ. just talking, as Brown had taken photos of the child from afar and had actually been formulating a plan to kidnap him. These fuckers need to be locked up, like, big time. Like, like in the darkest hole, secluded from everybody as far away as possible. Like, don't, we need, Jesus Christ. He had even sent a photo of the child with black lines drawn over it to show the various spots in which Ronald wanted to butcher him. This was all supported by his friend Michael too, who himself claimed to have eaten multiple children, with a man even sending a photo of a two-year-old girl that was seen inside of a pot, inside of an oven. And this wasn't the end of the shocking discoveries either, as things were made even worse upon investigators- This fucking Toronto piece of shit. UE Lime. In doing so, they discovered an account on a website called- Wait, what was that? UE Lime, what was that? UE Lime. As things were made even worse upon investigators searching into Ronald's username, UE Lime. Oh, username. In doing so, they discovered an account on a website called cutedeadguys.net, which was and is a forum for sharing images of the dead between those who fetishize corpses. And within his account, Ronald stated that he was one of these people too, admitting that he loved the sight of dead boys ever since he was a young man. And he wasn't lying either. Upon these revelations, Ronald's home was raided where police would find over 200 images containing CP, which didn't Jesus. even include the hundreds of others showing tied up children, children being abused, and children that appeared to be dead. Along with this, police also- This is hard to watch, to be honest. Also found a blow up sex doll in the home that was dressed in little boy's clothing and inside one of his sock drawers was another hard drive with images of countless dead children as well as a single flyer for a missing child in the area. He also had hundreds of images of a young boy named Andrew who had attended Brown's church and youth group with a boy having died of a brain tumor years before. Photos that showed the boy's slow physical decline all the way until his memorial service. You know, Ron, you have to invite Jesus Christ to come into your heart and ask him to forgive you of your sin. Fuck you, you fucking bitch. What the hell? Dude. I just joined back to hear... Dude, you missed... You missed a crazy thing. You should watch the, the thing afterwards, but... Dude. I can't even say. I can't even say. I can't even answer your question. It's so bad. Basically, these guys are f fucking f freaks, and they need to be locked up. They are, um... Jesus Christ, anyway. I can't even say. Upon his arrest, Ronald Brown admitted to everything. He truly did want to eat the child he had been eyeing up at his church, along with many others over the years. Though after saying this, he claimed that he would never actually have carried through with it, and that Michael and him were merely role-playing. This is heavily debated to this day, as technically there isn't proof that any of these delusions spilled over to the real world. What? But that's only what we know of. And considering the large quantity of CP in his home, the self-admitted obsession with dead little boys, and the actual plans he had to kidnap and eat a child, it seemed clear that it was only a matter of time before he finally followed through with his desires. For Ronald, there was no defense. And because of this, the judge handed down a sentence of 20 years in 2014 which would wind up becoming a life judge handed down a sentence of 20 years in 2014 which 20 years are you fucking kidding me which would wind up becoming a life sentence as of okay that's better years he passed away sometime in 2020 well before his scheduled release well he won't be missed jesus fucking Christ.
Guys, this is this is actually like the worst thing I've watched so far. I was like at the beginning, I was like, hey, this seems okay. Like what's I don't see what the big deal is. Like Joy Junction teaching some kids some good, like okay, uh, you know, life lessons or whatever. It's a church it's a religious thing. It's a church thing, started in a church thing. And then it got canceled. Just to catch up to speed, it got canceled after 20 years and like wiped out. I want to know what goes inside the jury's mind. Like 20 years? I, I I know. Right? So anyway, just to catch you up to speed. These motherfuckers had CP. And they fantasize of like... I can't even... I don't even want to say it. Let me just play back. I'll show you really quick. Look at these messages. Just watch this. He Nick won't even say it because it's so bad. He's just He's just showing it. Watch it. Within their conversations were numerous messages between the two men, fantasizing about not only killing children, but eating them as well. That's what I was, that's why I couldn't say what the fuck was happening, because it's that bad. Anyway, we're going back to where it was. So this guy finally got fucking caught, and then as you said, like, what the fuck is happening in the jury's mind? 20 fucking years? Are you fucking kidding me? Quantity of At least they bumped it up to a life sentence and then he eventually died or whatever. DP in his Jesus home. Christ. Whoever the f whoever whoever thought it was a good idea to just do 20 years at first is a fucking idiot. I mean, there's a legal stuff and probably didn't have enough evidence or whatever. Admitted obsession with dead little boys and the actual plans he had to kidnap and eat a child. It seemed clear that it was only a matter of time before he finally followed through with his desires. He actually Ronald, did it. There was no defense. And because of this, the judge handed down a sentence of 20 years in 2014, which would wind up. Puppeteer charged with CP, feds, chatted a lying about unaliving and eating young people. It's fucking despicable. Yeah, I agree with you. Becoming a life sentence, as it appears he passed away sometime in 2020. Thank fucking well God it was a life sentence, man. What a fucking stupid sentence that first one was. 20 years? Are you fucking kidding me? Scheduled release. <laughs> Wait a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. As it appears he passed away in 2014, which would wind up becoming a life sentence. As it appears he passed away sometime. Oh my god. Oh my god. I didn't realize it. They didn't make it a life sentence. It was 20 years and he just died. Halfway through or whatever before the 20 years was up. So it technically became a life sentence because he died during the. What the fuck is wrong with the justice system? You 2020, well before his scheduled release. This discovery changed the entire context surrounding Joy Junction, the wholesome TV show beloved by children all across the country, only for one of its main stars to be outed as a predator of the most disturbing caliber. But there was one last discovery made by law what? enforcement in Ronald's case. Another that makes one? the show that much more chilling. Oh my god, what? Please During stop. The raid on Ronald's home, officers found a collection of journals that Ronald wrote in daily, where he obsessively discussed young boys that he had been coming into contact with, highlighting his desire to know what it was like to kill them and to know how they taste. These journals, to my knowledge, have never been released to the public. But the thing I find most interesting about this is the date at which these journals started. 1978. Oh, you gotta be fucking, you gotta be fucking kidding me. 
The show started in 1979, and the journals were discovered in 1978, a year before the children's show, religious children's sh show, started. You sorry about the video on mute? No, no more. Uh, no worries. Disturbing desire had been brewing inside of him for decades. And coincidentally, Joy Junction just so happened to start one year later in 1979, meaning that many of the kids seen on this program were likely the- That is ridiculous! Look how close she is to him! Very same ones that Ronald wanted to eat. Given this context, it's no wonder why all parties involved with Joy Junction cut ties with it completely. It just changes the entire feeling of the show. From the moment that one simple water bottle was identified, Joy Junction's fate was sealed, and so was Ronald Brown's. Still though, I'm left with- I originally thought that that- I was close, but it wasn't this guy, it was the other guy. In my prediction at the beginning. About one of them being a pedophile. It was even worse. Worse than a pedophile. He's a fucking psycho! And so was Ronald Brown's. Still though, I'm left with many questions after reviewing this case. Was there anything more to that traffic stop in 1998? Or those pizza parties with the kids? And how serious was Ronald about following through with his plans to kill C? With the answer to these questions likely being taken to the grave along with him. But what I find so fascinating about this case is that the fallout of the raid on Michael Arnett's home is still being felt to this very day. On his devices weren't just chats from Ronald Brown. What? In fact, there were hundreds of other predators, with what? officers going on to arrest many of them, some of whom are still in the process of being tried and sentenced. And when reading into some of these other cases involving Michael, it's evident just how serious these people were about their dark cravings. One of these men was even recently caught having built an entire bunker, equipped with torture tools in preparation for his first victim, which he planned to share with Michael. On top of all the CP distribution, what the fuck? these fantasies about killing children weren't just role play. These were very real thoughts and very real plans. But the one small bright spot of this case is that the two-year-old girl that Michael had photographed in his oven, thankfully, was found alive and well. Oh God, he thank too God! Never got to carry through with eating a child, at least that we know. But his physical abuse against them was, in fact, very real. And as were his desires, desires that him and Ronald likely would have acted on had this entire ring never been exposed. Jesus Christ. When it was conceived, Joy Junction was meant to teach children morals, right from wrong. But ironically, many of these lessons just so happened to be taught by a man who was actively engaging in the very behaviors that were condemned by Joy Junction. Ron, they were looking at some dirty pictures and they wanted me to look too. Is your what a fucking hypocrite. What a fucking hypocrite. Psycho hypocrite, motherfucker. Companions, you should have friends who have pure and clean thoughts and will only give you good ideas. With his actions. Oh my god. He's educating kids on how to have clean and pure thoughts and not look at dirty pictures. What a fucking hypocrite. Forever tainting the show and condemning it to a lifetime of obscurity, remembered only for the man and his puppet who brought the whole thing down. As a matter of fact, there's something I want to share right now. What a terrible legacy. Really? That's right. Don't go away, kid. Joy Junction is coming right back. Oh, my God. Wow. Guys, that was a hard video to watch, to be honest. Jesus Christ. That was probably one of Nick's craziest videos I've seen. Yeah, don't watch this while you're eating. Jesus. He's manipulative, as, he's manipulative AF. Making the shows so no one could suspect him. I don't think he made the show. Like, I think, I, honestly, I think the show is just normal. But they hired this guy without knowing. Unless I missed something at the beginning. But I'm pretty sure they just hired this guy without knowing about how sinister he is. So I think it was just a normal show. But it just, it just ended up with a terrible human being. You can't even call him a human being. He's a piece of trash. And what the fuck... You should be a, okay. The justice system, system, whoever was involved in that trial with him, should be ashamed of themselves. Twenty fucking years? Are you fucking serious? The guy wanted to kill and eat children. Okay. And he had CP. It's unexcusable and despicable.
Anyway, Jesus Christ. Okay. Subscribe to Nick Crowley and like the video. And uh, it's um, he's an amazing creator. He does amazing research. Always banger videos. Um, please go support him. He's amazing. Anyway, that was the children's TV show with a dark secret. And holy fuck, what a dark secret that was. That was insane, guys. I need a break for that for a second from that. <laughs> I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Jesus Christ.